The European Cricket Network is available on SportsFlick for all our viewers outside the Indian subcontinent. Watch all your favourite sports live or on demand on SportsFlick for one low monthly subscription fee. To find out more about SportsFlick, head to www.sportsflickglobal.com or check out the SportsFlick app in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. The European Cricket Network is available on Fancode for all our viewers watching from the Indian subcontinent. Fancode is India's premier digital sports destination committed to giving all fans the best that sport has to offer. You can even pick up a bargain in the brand new Fancode shop. Go to fancode.com or download the Fancode app for your mobile device. Hello guys, it's Mr. Maximo here, Vinny Sandu for the European Cricket Network and welcome to my weekly preview show for European Cricket and the week beginning Monday the 30th of November 2020. And of course, it's the second and final week for the European Cricket Series Malta. We have five more days of T10 cricket action coming your way, beginning every day at 7.30 a.m. GMT. That's 8.30 a.m. in Central Europe and it's 1 p.m. in India. And as always, you can catch the action right here on the European Cricket Network. For details about how to watch in your part of the world, just check the beginning and end of this video. And just a reminder, if you don't already, why don't you follow us on social media? Because as I always say, there is so much happening in the world of European cricket. You can follow us at European Cricket. You can follow me at Mr. Maximo. You can also download the mobile app in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And our YouTube channel, ECN European Cricket Network. It's a fantastic place to go for all the highlights of the matches, as well as our website, europeancricket.com. That is where you can get all the fixtures, stats, and standings from the current series, including all the information on the specific teams and players involved. If you enjoy these videos, please leave a like, and don't forget to leave a comment as well, and I'll get back to as many as I can. So let's have a look at what's coming your way from Malta this week. We have five more days of T10 cricket action. Four matches every day beginning at 1pm Indian Standard Time. We've got six teams over there, 33 matches in total over nine match days. Of course, we've had four days of action already. Only the top four will play finals on finals Friday the 4th of December. So it'll be very interesting to see those teams jostle for positions. It's a double round robin format, so the six teams will play 10 matches each. All right, let's start my team reports then. And I'm beginning with Overseas CC. Now, of course, we had Lee Tuck from Overseas on the show with me last week, previewing all the teams. And they did fancy their chances, particularly on the first day against the Southern Crusaders. But unfortunately, nothing's gone right for Overseas, although they did get a last ball uh, game against the Crusaders in uh, their second match, but they did go down. They've lost all six of their matches, unfortunately. So a horror start to the tournament. And they only have four matches left. So there's not much they can do. I can't see them making the final four, although I do think it's a mathematical possibility. But they would fancy their chances against AUM, the American University of Malta, as well as the Mceta Warriors, who they'll play twice uh, each in their remaining four games. So as far as their star performers, Heinrich Gericke, no surprises there. He was previewed last week. He is their leading run scorer with 82 runs. He's also taken five wickets with the ball. I've given him three Maximos, and I've given two Maximos to Andy Naudi. He's also taken five wickets and performed well with the bat as well, 68 runs. I've given one Maximo to the captain, Jörg Hershey, who is their leading wicket taker with six wickets. Hasn't contributed that much with the bat. He's got 24 runs, but I think they've just been outclassed in their matches against the Knights as well as Master CC. So, like I said, they look to be out of the running, but they can shape this final four in their remaining matches. So watch out for them. I do think that they will get some wins in the second week of action. On to our next team then, which is the Southern Crusaders. Now, they had a perfect start to the week, winning their first four games, but they have lost their last two games. So the wins came over over CCC and AUM, and neither of those teams has won a game. They haven't beaten a team in the top four yet. They lost both the games to the Mceta Warriors. So I think it'll be interesting to see where they finish. They are top of the table, but they are two games, or well, they've played two more games than the teams under them. So I wonder if they'll be able to even 
can cling on to a top two spot. But they do have important games against Master CC as well as the Knights who are second and third at the moment. So that really will define the final four as we head into finals Friday this week. And I tell you what, these guys, they're last over specialists. They love the close games. They seem to make any game a close game. And for me, they had a couple of last ball finishes. The highlight for me was their win 78-77 versus AUM. Poor AUM. They haven't scored a win yet in four matches. Now, in that game, the scores were tied with the ball to go and the AUM wicketkeeper hit the stumps successfully and you thought the batsman had been run out, but the Bales didn't fall off. It was one of the most dramatic finishes I've ever seen. So watch out for them. Hopefully they have some good performances this week and we see some more close games there in Malta. Now I do think the batsmen do need to get moving a bit. If they're going to compete, they haven't really put on a competitive score on the board against the top four team yet. So I think that will be the litmus test this week as they do play Massa and the Knights. I've given three Maximos to Zishan Yusuf. We did highlight him last week. He's been pretty good with 88 runs as well as four wickets for his team. And he's scoring at about 140 runs per 100 balls, which is the best strike rate of any of their batsmen. I've given two Maximos to Eardley Chandram, who has five wickets this week as well as scoring 20 runs. But he's been a bit of a snail, unfortunately, with the bat. He's only hitting at 67 runs per 100 balls. So he does need to get moving if they're going to bat him that high in the order. I've given one Maximo to their leading run scorer for the week so far, Gopal Takua. I've been really impressed with him. He scored 91 runs, including a highest score of 40 not out, which is their highest score of any batsman this week for the Crusaders, and he's averaging over 30. So a few players to watch there. Now, I didn't give a Maximo to this guy, but I do love his work. Muhammad Bilal, the fast left armor. He is a weapon, and he's actually only picked up uh, two wickets, which surprises me, but his economy rate is outstanding. It's under runner ball 5.91. So watch out for Muhammad Bilal again, because I think it's a matter of time till he picks up a bag of wickets. He's very fast, very accurate, and one of the most exciting place players to watch in Malta, in my opinion. Now, I did mark the Crusaders up a few points, up to an 83 from 78. Moving along now to the Atlas UTC Knights. And they were favourites going into this competition. And they haven't done much wrong so far. They haven't lost a match yet, although they did have one washout. So they're equal on seven points as well with Master CC. And they're just behind them because of net run rate. And look, they looked a bit rusty early, to be honest. They scraped through against AUM and they won that game with three balls to spare. So I do think that they can improve. I think... There hasn't been a lot of T10 cricket played in Malta. So, of course, it's a bit of adjustment for all these teams. It's a bit different from T20 cricket, which the players would play a lot more of. Now, as far as players to watch for them, I've given three Maximos to Samuel Sanish Stanislaus, who is their leading run scorer with 70 runs, and he's striking very well. He's running hot with a strike rate of 156. I've given two Maximos to Eldos Matthew, who has five wickets this week. It's the most wickets of any night. And I've given one Maximo to Alameen Begum. He's only scored 35 runs, but he has looked pretty good when I've seen him. He looks to be banging the ball pretty well. So watch out for those guys. Now, as far as economy, they've been pretty good as far as keeping the other teams under control. I've just noted there, Asif Shah has an economy rate of 5.16, which is one of the best in Malta. And Eldhos Matthew, as well as his five wickets, he's done them pretty tightly. He's got an economy rate of 6.40. Now, interestingly, the captain, Sujesh K. Apu, and Justin Shadju, they're yet to take a wicket. So their fortunes haven't been going very well so far in Malta. Hopefully, they can turn things around and get a couple in the second week. Now, I did have these guys rated as a 95 last week. I've just marked them down a couple of points. We're down to 92 because I just felt they were a bit rusty against AUM. But I do think they still will be contenders. They're only going to improve. And they have six more matches to hone their craft before finals Friday when it will all be on the line and we'll see who will raise the trophy in Malta. Turning our attention to AUM now, the American University of Malta. And look, they are very unlucky to be winless. They have three losses and a washout out of their four games, but they've taken every game deep. They've lost two games with three balls to spare and they lost one game on that last ball. We talked about that very dramatic last ball finish against the Southern Crusaders. So they came into this tournament. We thought they were underdogs, but I think they have performed pretty well against 
a couple of good teams there. And I think their crunch games will come this week, particularly uh, they'd fancy their chances against overseas CC, the way that they've been playing. But they also have these games against the uh, Mesita Warriors. And if they win those games, they can get up into fourth spot. So Monday is a huge day for them. It's their chance to make a run for the final four. Now, as far as their players, I've given three Maximos to Zoheb Malik. Now, he's been outstanding as far as I'm concerned. He banged 60 not out of 30 balls versus the Crusaders. It's the only half century of the week. And with the ball, he's been very hard to get away. He's got an economy of 6.5 runs per over. Only taken a wicket, but he's looked dangerous. And I think that he could be good for another wicket or two. And hopefully keeps batting the way that he's batting. It's great that he's got the only half century of the week so far. Now, I've given two Maximos to Abhishek Prajapati. Now, he's only played one match so far, so hopefully he gets on the park a bit more often in week two as they look to make a run to the finals. So he's only scored 26 runs, has picked up a wicket, but he is their key player. We highlighted his uh, importance last week in the show uh, when we were speaking to Lee Tuck about AUM. So yeah, Abhishek Prajapati, I think, could be the key. He could be the X Factor if he comes into the lineup. I've given one Maximo to Ravi Paul. He's picked up a couple of wickets and has looked likely at times that, uh, look, you know, they will be underdogs, I think, against the Mesita Warriors, but I think that the 10-over format seems to suit them. And like I say, they've been taking the games deep. They've been taking the games to the last over. So I have marked them down a little bit because they're winless. They were 72 last week. I've marked them down to a 70, but I would like to... Uh, see them perform against the Warriors and uh, really force a competitive race for the final four. Turning our attention now to the host club, Master CC, and they've been outstanding with an unbeaten first week. They're sitting second on the table with a very healthy net run rate of plus 3.7, the best net run rate of any team there in Malta. And I've been very impressed with them so far. I think that it's their home ground and they've shown that they know exactly how to play and they've really gotten in the spirit of the T10 cricket. So let's talk about some of their star performers. Now I've given three Maximos to their captain, Harun Mughal. Now his strike rate of 245 is out of this world. He scored 54 runs as well as taking four wickets for his team. I've given two Maximos to Noel Kostler. He also has a very good strike rate of 193 runs per 100 balls. And look, those two, they're the fastest scoring batsmen in the tournament so far of any batsmen that have scored at least 30 runs. So they've been very impressive weapons for the host club here. And they're a big reason that they are undefeated at this stage. But look, to be honest, they haven't been challenged just yet. These are... Important games ahead beginning on Monday. These are crunch games versus the Knights. I think both of those teams will have their eyes on first place heading into finals Friday. And those games could be the games that will determine which one will actually finish higher. And a special shout out there to their 61 years young wicketkeeper, John Grimer. JG, does he still have it? He certainly does. He has one catch and four stumpings this week in Malta. The fastest hands in Malta there at 61 years of age. It's great to see him out there and he's doing a fantastic job behind the stumps. He's actually only conceded six buys in three full matches behind the wicket. So well done to him. Massa, yeah, look, I've marked them up a little bit. I started them at a 90 at the start of the week, but I've got them up to a 94 because they have impressed me. But like I say, these crunch games against the Knights will determine, I think, which one of those teams will finish higher. I think they would fancy their chances against the Crusaders and AUM later in the week. But of course, anything can happen. It's going to be a very exciting second week there in Malta. Time for our final team report card then, and it's the Nsida Warriors, MSW. And look, they have won both their matches versus the Crusaders, and they had a washout and a loss versus the hosts, Master CC. Now look, they can cement their place in the top four on Monday and Wednesday as they play AUM as well as Overseas CC. So they will have their eyes on the top four and perhaps even sneaking up out of fourth place up to third or even eyeing off the top two if they can win uh, enough of their remaining matches. 
and I've been pretty impressed with the Warriors. I thought they were kind of probably uh, kind of there and thereabouts coming into the tournament, and they haven't disgraced themselves so far. I do think do think it was handy picking up that point in the washout against the Master CC because they were outclassed in the other game they played against the hosts. Now, I've given three Maximos to the captain, Rahul Nair, who has 89 runs. It's the most runs of any of their batsmen, and he's also picked up three wickets. But his economy rate has been outstanding with the ball. He's only conceding 4.25 runs per over, and that is the best economy rate of any bowler there in Malta. So it's so important that you've got a bowler who can put the brakes on, and the captain certainly is doing that. I've given two Maximos to Manuel Anthony, who is the leading wicket taker with seven out of the whole tournament there in uh, Malta. So seven wickets, and he's also got a very uh, healthy economy rate, if you like, of eight runs per over. So that's pretty decent, I guess. But seven wickets is a really good effort, and he has best bowling of three for 16. I have put... One Maximo next to Justin George. And he has scored 54 runs, but it's the way he's scored them. He's striking at 169 runs per 100 balls. He's hit seven Maximos in there as well. So out of his 54 runs, 42 of them coming in sixes. And so he actually he's hit two fours as well. So 50 of his 54 runs have come in boundary. So he does know how to hit to the boundary and hit over them as well. So one thing I would say about the Warriors is all their runs have been coming from only three batsmen there. You can see only three batsmen have scored a decent amount of runs and then it drops off a lot to a Jayamali who only has eight runs in fourth place. So I think perhaps uh, if they can get a bit of help then they'll be a bit more competitive especially against these stronger teams that they'll need to beat if they uh, to triumph on finals Friday, but they do look good for the final four for me, and they can cement uh, their lead over AUM in those games on Monday. Now, I've kept their rating steady at 85, so watch out for the Warriors. I think that uh, they will be kind of a competitive mid-table kind of a team, but they could pull off a couple of surprises if they're given the opportunity. So let's have a look at Mr. Maximo's team ratings after one week of action there in Malta. And there's been a little bit of movement. Uh, let's start at the top. I have put Massa now just edging ahead of AUK, basically because I think that the Knights have been a little bit rusty. They've taken their time getting into the format. So the Knights have come down to 92. And Massa, I've got them in top spot now. Just the way they're playing, I'm very impressed with their form in the first week, but I can't wait for those two teams to play each other. I think that that will be a very interesting matchup early in the week. I've got the Warriors steady at 85, and I put the Crusaders, they've crept up. I had them a couple of points below Overseas CC. They were uh, 78 against Overseas's 80 before the tournament, but the Southern Crusaders with their wins and topping the table, I put them up five points, but I do still have them just below the top three teams. I think they haven't beaten a team that's been in the four as yet. So I think that uh, they still have a little way to go if they're to prove themselves as genuine trophy contenders. Overseas CC, well, they have had a horrendous start to the week. No surprises there. They've dropped from an 80 down to a 72. But I do still have them a couple of points ahead of AUM. I think the overseas could uh, kind of hit their straps a little bit in week two. And I do favor overseas to get over AUM. But I do think AUM would think that they have a good chance, particularly against Overseas CC. So it'll be a very interesting week too. Of course, only four of these teams can make the finals. And I hope that you join us on the European Cricket Network to see the exciting conclusion of the European Cricket Series Malta. So hopefully you can join me tuning in to the European Cricket Series Malta every day this week, Monday to Friday, with the games beginning at 7.30 a.m. GMT. That's 8.30 in Central Europe and it's 1 p.m. in India. For all the extra information that you've seen in this video and more, you can go to europeancricket.com. And for ways to tune in, all you have to do is check the beginning and the end of this video for where to watch in your part of the world because the European Cricket Network is a global enterprise and it's great that so many people from around the world are enjoying the European Cricket Series. But for now, this is Mr. Maximo, Vinny Sandu for European Cricket saying enjoy the games. We'll see you next time on European Cricket. The European Cricket Network is available on Fancode for all our viewers watching from the Indian subcontinent. Fancode is India's premier digital sports destination committed to giving all fans the best that sport has to offer. You can even pick up a bargain in the brand new Fancode shop. 
Go to fancode.com or download the Fancode app for your mobile device. The European Cricket Network is available on SportsFlick for all our viewers outside the Indian subcontinent. Watch all your favourite sports live or on demand on SportsFlick for one low monthly subscription fee. To find out more about SportsFlick, head to www.sportsflickglobal.com or check out the SportsFlick app in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.